Hey, all right, guys. How's it going? Uh, it's proper cold today. Really cold. Uh, I got my heater running over there. First time this year in the garage, which means it's properly cold outside. But you know, let's get on with it. We're gonna paint a helmet today. Well, we're gonna start painting a helmet today anyway. Uh, let's do this. Uh, before, however, I start uh, preparing the, pa the helmet for the paint uh, for paint job and all the prep and everything with it, uh, there seems to be a lot of um, there's a huge debate actually on the internet whether a helmet uh, can be painted, whether it should be painted, whether it's safe, whether it's legal, and all that stuff. Uh, if you're interested, you can just type in uh, "Can I paint a helmet?" or whether helmet painting is legal or safe, and you'll find endless and endless discussions on the internet and articles about it. Uh, the way I look at it. Basically, any surface can be painted, right? Pretty much. Uh, the helmets already, most of the modern helmets anyway, have already been painted by the factory. So as long as we take the um, precautions and do it in a safe way, I believe helmet can be painted in a safe manner without um, damaging the integrity of it or, or the structure of the helmet itself. And uh, it will still remain safe uh, to use and, well, legal uh, on the road. There were some materials of helmets that have been uh, manufactured back in the past uh, that could not be painted at all or could not be covered in any stickers or something because the, the shell itself uh, would be uh, damaged, the structure would be damaged of it and that would render the helmet unusable or unsafe for the road use, right? Um, these days most of the modern helmets um, they are safe to be painted if we take extra precautions uh, and if we do it in a safe way uh, just like with everything else really I'm not gonna go into the great detail about it but the main thing is is basically to protect the internals of it because the inside of a helmet uh, the polystyrene bit uh, is the, the, the part that makes your brain your head um, protects it the outer shell just protects the internal bits of it basically from the elements and everyday use um, so we need to protect the internal part as well as the external part um, and the main thing is not to rub it down too hard with sandpaper or any machinery god forbid that uh, don't rub it down all the way to bare plastic where you can damage the integrity of the helmet and weaken it um, that would be bad as always i'll have to advise uh, before you guys slay me for damaging that helmet and all that stuff i always advise the customer you know that it's uh, you're taking uh, maybe not a risk, but it's your responsibility uh, if you want to paint that helmet. But then on the other hand, uh, you see professional uh, Formula One racing drivers and uh, dirt bike off-road riders and, and, and motorcycle riders. All of them professionals got the helmet custom painted. Um, and these helmets are top, the best quality, the best you can buy, the best money you can buy, because these guys are exposed to some serious risk. And if, if they ha can have the helmet painted, uh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to paint it on the road. Obviously, again, um, do advise of doing it. Uh, it's completely up to you. If you want your helmet painted, you go ahead and do it. If you don't want to have your helmet painted because you are afraid of uh, damaging the structure integrity of it and you, uh, you wouldn't be uh, able to trust helmet like this, then it's absolutely fair play. It's your choice. Uh, you don't want to have your helmet painted, don't paint your helmet. It's simple as that. <laughs> anyway, all this legal bullshit out of the way. Let's focus on this helmet. Uh, this was sent to me by one of you guys, one of the viewers, by Raymond. Hey Raymond, how you doing? Uh, we've been discussing the design of the helmet uh, for a uh, well, few weeks actually. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, we got to some kind of uh, conclusion in the end. Raymond won kind of specific thing to it, but he left me free hand of how to do it, um, which is greatly appreciated. I love that. Uh, the main idea is there, but you know the interpretation of it is kind of loose, so I can I can play with it and I can see what's what's working on this or not. And uh, Raymond already stripped down the internals, most of the internals parts for me in the helmet, which is great. Uh, all the lining has been removed. Um, it is if you paint your helmet, uh, it is very 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 important to mask all the linings because it's nearly impossible to remove any paint uh, or primer if you spray some kind of overspray can get in here so it's very extremely important if you can't remove it to mask it out very very really well um, take your time of doing it because uh, it will pay off when you come to unmasking everything off you don't want any paint to get it in here uh, also got the polystyrene um, the, the shell unit inside I'm gonna make sure this is also extremely well masked 
I don't want got any overspray or any solvents get in there because that will ruin the structure of it. That will completely chew through the polystyrene. You don't want anything like this happening there because as I mentioned before, that will destroy the integrity of the helmet. We don't want that happening. Now we need to prepare the helmet for paint before we actually start priming and painting that helmet with uh, any, any other means or forms. So as I said, the lining has been removed. I need to mask off the inside. Uh, it's not a brand new helmet. It's, hel it's a second hand. It has been used for quite some time. And it's got some marks and damage on it. And I need to work with this. Uh, one of the things is the rubber, uh, rubber kind of lip around the unit, around the bottom edge. Um, it's already coming off, uh, which kind of... Um, you know, helps me make up my mind because usually uh, I would like to leave it on the rubber rubber edge around the bottom lip. Uh, I would leave it on uh, if it's brand new, but in this case it's coming off, so it's gonna just make it easier for me to remove it completely. Uh, as you can see, it's not very difficult um, to remove this. Take care when you're doing this. Uh, if it's not coming off, use some stabilo knife or some other. You know, uh, don't use any solvents. Use stabilo knife to uh, remove that very very gently and don't lose that lip because we have to put it on uh, later on when we're going to reassemble the helmet. Um, same goes with um, vents. If the vent can be removed in a safe, a safe way uh, from the inside, there's easy access to it. It's best to remove like vents and some moving parts. If not, it has to be masked off or painted directly on the helmet. But we're going to inspect that later on. Uh, as I discussed with uh, Raymond as well, all those little badges, uh, model and the, and, the, and the mate of the helmet, this little Shark S900, uh, that will be removed as well, he doesn't want that, uh, which is fair play. Um, also the sticker on the back that uh, certifies the helmet is uh, uh, ACU approved basically, you have to come off as well. Um, if you want to have that sticker you'll need to contact ACU probably or the, the British Motorcycle Sport Association, uh, whatever they are. Uh, basically without that sticker they will not have let you on the racetrack if that's what you're going for. Um, I'm not sure whether that sticker is needs to be legally there when you're riding on the roads. Uh, I'm not sure about this. Uh, don't ask me, you need to check on yourself. But that sticker will need to come off before we paint this. Uh, if you want to stick it back on, you need to order a new one, either from the manufacturer or from the ACU themselves or uh, from some other source. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> I don't know nothing, I just paint the helmet, guys. <laughs> and last but not least, as I said, uh, you need to mask off all the moving parts and the vents and especially the visor mechanism over here. That will need to be masked off completely because that will not be painted. You got moving parts, springs and, and some locking systems. I don't want to cover that in paint. And as I said previously, all the inside need to be masked off. So before I do anything else, um, as I said, I remove the, uh, the rubber lip because it's coming off. I see if I can remove some uh, moving parts, some vents and some uh, some other stuff, all the stickers and then I go ahead masking off uh, all the components I don't want the paint uh, to cover. Just a quick tip for you guys as we uh, go along. So I remove all the uh, um, vents and so on and you know from a, from a side and top of the helmet. Uh, remove the uh, the back part of the uh, rubber lip that was goes around the uh, bottom edge of the helmet but the front part is actually really good quality it's stuck uh, really well so I don't want to remove it because its factory is never going to be as good um, and to get the best uh, um, best cut around it just heavy or uh, stability knife overlap slightly but more of the edge um, on the lip when you want to go for it and then just do a precision cut like this I'll make sure that we get all the way around the uh, the edge of that and now come come cleanly like that so no need to precision mask it all the way through just make sure it's stuck and then do a clean cut with a very sharp blade your scalpel blade and I will uh, get you out of trouble quite quickly so yeah I'm gonna carry on and uh, catch you guys later right now the whole thing has been completely uh, masked up inside and all the parts I basically don't want any paint to get on, um, I cover them in a, in a masking tape. Uh, you Good quality masking tape, you don't want it to come off. Uh, it's rather time consuming process, but it's, uh, it's necessary to get it done right. You'll thank yourself for doing it right uh, when it comes to unmasking everything else. All right, next, uh, next part here is to uh, sand everything down. Um, and because it's, uh, it's, it's either plastic or fiberglass or any kind of surface like this which is not 
metal really I don't like to use sandpaper uh, sandpaper can be used on the crush helmets and in some cases it should be used uh, I'll show you that later on um, but I like I don't I don't like using sandpaper it's too aggressive for any kind of plastic um, or or softer surface like like crush helmet uh, what I use instead is the scotch brights you got the uh, the very very soft which is called gray then a the medium one is green and the aggressive one is red and the red is the one we're going to use over here we're going to we can actually go uh, through the surface quite aggressively just to get rid of all the shiny spots and knock off all the uh, paint from it and uh, we can use it as I said quite aggressively because it gives a lot and there's no risk of going through the actual crash helmet going through the paint and damaging the surface of the plastic uh, I just use my hand on the other side and quite aggressively I'm gonna um, sand it down using just this scotch bright nothing else as I said I like to use scotch brights um, or scotch pads not scotch brights scotch pads for any kind of plastic work when I need to sand it down knock or some paint off ready for paint ready for primer whatever comes next sandpaper with plastic can be too aggressive in my eyes there's place for it but I prefer using uh, this stuff on plastic surfaces uh, Let me crack on with this and I'll uh, show you a couple of other bits as we uh, get along So um, everything is knocked off, all the uh, shine from it, uh, done some uh, scratches you know, to the existing paint or the clear coat, whatever that was on it. As you can see I like using that, it's very forgiving, it's very flexible, gives to every kind of uh, uneven shape, shape and surface you got over here, which on the crush helmet is very very common and I like using that because it just goes in everywhere, you can be aggressive with this and it doesn't gonna go through. Uh, but there are th ways, there are, there are places that you need to use uh, sandpaper. I mean if that was a brand new crush helmet, uh, that would do the job just fine. But because it's quite old and been used a few times, it's got a couple of chips and knocks over here, like there's a stone chip over here and there's a couple on the back, we need to deal with it. And I'm not going to fill it in because it's a crush helmet, it's probably not the best thing to do. Um, we're going to use some sandpaper, I've got 600 grit, grit, wet and dry, and I'm try to very, very, very gently uh, work this little piece over here. Let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So it's a very small uh, chip over here and I'm gently using the block underneath. Uh, make sure you got rid of all the uh, dirt from the sandpaper. Block underneath the sandpaper and very very gently work this area and this area alone. The 600 grit. You don't want to go through too much. Just enough. to make it disappear check every now and again as you can see the white's coming off that means it's a bit, it has been clear coated because of the uh, it's not black it's white but we're most probably going to go through the clear coat over here and now that's it I can no longer feel that little chip here yeah it's been leveled nothing there and that's that's all it takes basically. I've got one more over here on the back. Where are we? Over here. And the same principle. Sandpaper and very, very gently. This spot and this spot alone. What I do basically that get rid of all the excess clear coat and paint around that little chip as here very gently keep rubbing it until it completely disappears it doesn't take much it's only chipping the paint it's not the actual you know in the crush helmet <laughs> that would be bad <laughs> 
a little bit more. Let's uh, do it very, very gently until it disappears. It's nearly gone. That's it. Done. Gone completely. And that's all it takes. I'm going to go through the rest of the crush helmet. Make sure there are no more uh, chips and uh, some other imperfections. With a 600 grit sandpaper, wet and dry. And I'm going to get rid of all of them. And then uh, we take it from there. Alright, now the whole helmet has been uh, cleaned and degreased with some uh, panel wipe uh, prep, degreased that kind of thing. Uh, this is where the Takra comes uh, very handy. Uh, to pick up all the dust from, as you can see there's like these little corners and, and tiny spaces and all these shapes and stuff. Um, yes, you can blow it out with compressor, uh, which I probably will do in a minute anyway, but the majority of it I'd like to pick up with a uh, tack rack. Just remember, don't rub it down to be very, very gently. I just fluff it in my hand and I very gently go around and I can see all those um, fluff and dust and whatever that left over the dirt from uh, from sanding it down it just disappears very nicely that's why I like using tack rugs just before I apply my coat of paint or primer or, or clear or whatever you are uh, whatever you're about to paint your surface with um, so this is nearly ready for a first coat of primer and I've been on it guys solid four uh, four and a half nearly five hours you know with a the break here and there and I haven't even touched the paint yet you know so that's that's already five hours nearly of work and I haven't even touched any kind of paint any artwork is not even remotely there and I haven't even laid down any design as you can see I'm just preparing all that stuff so next time you're asking somebody why is my helmet painting cost more than 20 pounds but there's the reason this is exactly why it costs more than 20 pounds even on the minimum wage that wouldn't cover that now would it well anyway, we're not cutting corners as you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna use some compressed air to get rid of all those tiny little uh, spectacles of dust from these corners and I'm gonna use primer on it. Um, it's probably not necessary to use primer but I like using primer on this thing because that you know promotes the adhesion of uh, of paint uh, and on top of that um, I like to use on the lighter surface for the artwork I have planned for this and the primer I've got is light grey colour, uh, so that's going to work just fine for me. I would not need to use any other um, base coats, you know, I just use a primer and then we're going to uh, lay out the design from there. Uh, let me uh, lay down the primer up for you and I'll uh, show you how it looks after that. Yeah, so that's it for today guys, uh, the helmet is uh, prepped and primed, ready to uh, start some artwork on it. Join me in part 2 of this video, uh, of this project, uh, we're going to start masking it for some um, artwork, uh, we're going to lay basic design of that, basic colors. Um, not quite sure how and when and how we're gonna approach this but I'm sure we find a way uh, to make it work so until next time guys thank you very much for watching have a be rock hard and I'll see you next time